Okay, it's seven o'clock. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the Lunenburg Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm going to tell you how the hearing will proceed, but first I have to give you a notification that this hearing is being recorded in accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law. Please be advised that the meeting will be broadcast in live, progress. Sorry. live through a local access cable on Facebook Live on the public access Facebook page and will be able to be found on the Lunenburg Public Access YouTube channel within 24 hours after the hearing. Uh, to participate remotely from a computer, you can go to Zoom meeting. Computer and app users may use the raise hand feature to request to speak. I'd like to introduce you to the board. To my left is Lisa Normandin, the board secretary. I'm Alfred Gr Gravel. <laughs> This is David Blatt. I don't want to get confused. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Hans Winthrop, Patrick Callahan, and Don Gurney. Um, uh, the way the hearing will proceed is uh, Lisa will read the application and any other submitted com communications. The applicant and we'll have the opportunity for comments on the application or submission of additional documents. You will please come forward to the mic, give your name and address. Board members will have the opportunity to ask questions they might have on the application while you're at the mic. There will be a public comment period. You will please come forward to the mic, give your name and address, and address all comments and questions to the board. And with that, I would ask Lisa to please read the petition. This is an application for a special permit, Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 9, Zoning Board of Appeals. The name and address of the applicants are Rosalyn Lecton and Gary Steves of 100 Laurel Lane in Lunenburg. The undersigned hereby makes application as follows. The intent of the attached special permit request is to allow for a second lot on 100 Laurel Lane. The current lot is 1.97 acres and has 100 feet of frontage. The requested special permit would result in two lots, 1.01 acres and, nine, and 0.96 acres respectfully, and reduce frontage of 50 feet along Laurel Lane, each see attached plan. The attached zoning determination for the specific dimensional variance as variances as outlined in the building department. Laurel Lane is a small street and such frontage and acreage is consistent with most other properties on the street. The owners, Gary and Roz, are retired and would like to stay in Lunenburg, but are struggling with taxes and keeping up with such a large house. They have lived on Laurel Lane for nearly 25 years and have been good taxpaying citizens all these years and quite frankly love the town. The proposed project would result in two houses very consistent with the rest of the street and would allow Roz and Gary to live out retirement in a smaller, energy efficient home built, in the new, built on the new lot. They intend to sell 100 Laurel Lane. They would appreciate the town's understanding and hope to be allowed to move ahead with this project with the requested variance. Three, an application with the same dated 9-11-23 was submitted to the building inspector and was denied by same for the reasons attached in the letter attached here too. A request for zoning determination was applied for. An ANR lot was rejected based on the attached zoning determination letter. The proposed action has not begun. The basis for this application is found in the following section of the Lunenburg Zoning Bylaw. Section 250-5.1B, lot, fl lot frontage, and Section 255.1B, lot width through building. The street address of the property is 100 Laurel Lane in Lunenburg and found on Assessors Map 99, Parcel 28. The name and address of each holder of legal title to the land, which is the subject of this case, is Rosalind Lecton and Gary Steves of 100 Laurel Lane in Lunenburg. The deed is recorded in Worcester Northern District Registry of Deeds, Book five, 5, I'm sorry, 7534, page 131, and recorded 12-13 in 2011. The special permit questions and answers are as follows. A, will the proposed action be injurious or dangerous to the public health or unduly hazardous because of traffic congestion, danger of fire or explosion or other reasons? The response, no. B, will this action have a material adverse effect on the value of land and buildings in the neighborhood or on the amenities of the neighborhood? The response, the result would be 
a greater curb, greater curb appeal on the end of Laurel Lane, which would lead to improved property values for the abutting properties. C, will the proposed action be operated with reasonable regard for order and sightliness if an open use? The reply, absolutely. This will be designed by professional site engineers, architects, and landscape architects to achieve maximal sightliness and curb appeal. D, will the proposed action produce noise, vibration, dust, odor, heat, or glare observable at the lot lines and amounts clearly detrimental to the normal use of adjacent property? The reply, during the course of construction, there will be normal noise, vibration, etc. However, the construction team will do everything possible to minimize these disturbances and at all times abide by local laws and regulations. After the work is complete, no such disturbances will remain. And that was signed October 19th of 2023 by Gary Steves and Rosalind Lecton. Attached is a request for a zoning determination. Uh, describe the project or use in detail. The intent of the attached subdivision is to allow for a second lot on 100 Laurel Lane. The current lot, the current lot is 1.97 acres and has 100 feet of frontage. The requested variance would result in two lots, 1.01 acres and 0.96 acres respectively, and reduce frontage of 50 feet along Laurel Lane each. See attached plan. Laurel Lane is a small street and such frontage and acreage is consistent with most other amenities on the street. I mean, properties on the street. The owners, Gary and Roz, are retired and would like to stay in Lunenburg, but are struggling with taxes and keeping up such a large house. They lived on Laurel Lane for nearly 25 years and have been good tax, good tax paying citizens all of these years and quite frankly love the town. The proposed project would result in two houses, very consistent with the rest of the street, and would allow Roz and Gary to live out the retirement in a smaller, energy efficient home built in the new lot. They intend to sell 100 Laurel Lane. They would appreciate the town's understanding and have to be and hope to be allowed to move ahead with this project with the requested variance. Thank you. Please reach out to Aaron, their son, for questions and his phone number. The applicable bylaw um, in the determination, section 255.1b, lot frontage and lot width through building. The additional comments, the proposed constitutes a subdivision and subdivision approval from the planning board from the planning board will be required since the lots will not have the minimum required frontage. An ANR can only be used when minimum required frontage will be provided. As presented, the lots offer adequate lot area for, a si for single family homes within the Residence A zoning district. The single family structures would need to be in the RA district and the RB portion may only be for passive use. Each proposed lot lacks adequate frontage and adequate lot through lot width through building. A special permit to vary the dimensional requirements for each lot will be required. And that's signed by Brian Jingris, 921-23 Zoning and Building Commissioner. A list of abutters is attached, all of which were notified two weeks prior to tonight. And there is a site plan um, done by Cabco Consultants attached to the application. And that's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Okay. And with that, I would invite the applicant to come up to the mic. I'll represent my parents. Okay. I'll just give your name and address. Uh, Aaron Steves, 100 Laurel Lane, Lunenburg, Mass. Thank you. Okay. Um, do you have anything that you would like to add to your petition? I think that pretty much sums it up. Okay. Um, what I would like you to do, though, is this is very small and hard to see. So could you explain this layout and exactly what you're trying to accomplish? Yeah. So um, in the proposed lot 1A, that's where the existing home is. Uh, and it, as you can see there, that's the roughly 1.01 acre lot. The 0.96 acre lot is the adjacent lot, which would be on the north side of this, uh, of this plan. So basically the home, as you can see, the existing dwelling <coughs> is uh, you know, kind of two thirds of the way through. And then uh, it's attached to the existing uh, septic system, which is on the uh, proposed lot uh, 1B. Uh, the intent there would be to 
uh, hook up that existing house and the new house to the street. There's been multiple neighbors that have done that recently. And I believe there was also a, uh, um, an additional, what was it that you, you paid for some sort of? Uh, betterment. Yeah. Yes. A betterment, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so they paid for betterment on the street basically to bring the sewer and the water in. So as our, our understanding is that there's access in the street for both of those items. So basically what the result would be is the existing house would remain where it is attached to uh, the sewer in the street with the, with the water and sewer and the, a new home would go in the proposed lot uh, and the, you can see it's like a, uh, you can see the proposed house location on the lot 1B. Lot 1B would be the new location, the new uh, house. So if you look at the proposed lot 1B, yeah. there's uh, kind of right in the middle, there's a square. Mm -hmm. That's where the new house would go, right? Okay. So that's where the proposed new location would be. The intent is basically to build them a uh, passive home, ideally on uh, geothermal, if it's possible over there, with solar and uh, you know, try to make it as off-grid and energy efficient as possible. Um, so I, I myself am a builder uh, and you know, would help them to build the home ultimately. Okay. Um, okay, so right now in that district, yeah. um, it's required 40,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. You have, you have uh, almost two acres, correct? Yeah. But um, you have to satisfy all the criteria, and um, I can understand that you want to take what would be a conforming lot at present. Yeah. That needs needs nothing. Doesn't need uh, any permits whatsoever. It's an existing home, and you want to make basically go to two non-conforming lots, being the frontage, correct? Yeah. And actually. I believe when I had wrote that in the application initially, the 0.96 and the 1.01, .01, I had older information. But if you look on this plan, the engineer actually is indicating that there's 1.03 acres in parcel B, 1.01 .01 <coughs> acres in parcel A. So as I understand, based on what the engineer is telling us here, we actually do have two full acres. You do? Okay. Yeah. All right. So and I think that's what Brian also saw. And that's why he was indicating that there was two variances that we would need to go for, which is a lot width in the frontage. Right. Yeah, because you need about 175 feet through the building. Yeah. And I guess looking at the, uh, the town bylaws, you know, we fully understood and, and, and see those uh, issues, and which is why we're here tonight to you know, discuss that with you. Mm -hmm. However, just looking at the general conformity of the rest of the street, you know, these two lots would be bigger than almost every other lot on the street width-wise and frontage-wise, except for, you know, a couple of the other larger lots. So while I understand that laws have changed in the meantime, uh, I don't think it would change the general character of the street at all. And in fact, I think it would, you know, improve the property values in the area and it would be, you know, generally positive to the street. And, you know. Um, so when you go down Laurel Lane, yep. I went down there, um, you have the, the big house is the last house yeah the second to last house there's one more house second past to us. last okay yeah. there's yeah. one more okay yeah. so i got it in my mind which yeah. one it is and so that land looking at your house would be to the right if you're going down lower lane uh basically right when you come to uh, just about the end there's a few mailboxes in the right and then there's kind of like a little island on the end so that island is all on our land and then that house is our house is off to the right. That's the large house off to the right, and there's one you know kind of cottage on the end, past us. Okay, all right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm going to open it up to the rest of the board. I do have some other questions, but right now I'd like to see what the questions are. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chair, I just wanted a, a couple of clarifications on the uh, on the plot plot plan. Sure. Um, does does lot two? Um, it says here uh, Garico, I think is the name there. It shows a, um, a right-of-way along existing drive. So are they the access to that lot only through? Currently, yeah. Okay, so you're actually needing three houses on one drive, on one. So, on one well. Uh, well, hypothetically, we could run a driveway along, because his land does wrap around. This is just the way that it was built 
back in, you know many years ago they just gave them the easement through so if that was a requirement of the town there's a, there is a way that we could access we could provide access via a long driveway over to his house okay i, I just mentioned that is because there i think there is a there is bylaw a. that says you can only have two houses per driveway right there is and uh, and also um it's not technically a drive it's, it's a private road and then the driveway comes off of it I understand that, but you can only, if uh, the driveway would, basically the entrance to Laurel Lane mm -hmm. could only be serviced, uh, can only service two homes. Okay, so ideally then we would create a separate After. drive. Yeah, okay. Right. And I would look at that as I would basically try to figure out a way that, you know, if there was a way to access it, another thing on Laurel Lane, mm -hmm. that you kind of made it so that the, well, the existing house and that house shared a driveway and you guys had your own. Yeah, and if you look at the plot plan, so the only other driveway, right, it would be, if you look um, kind of where it says like N slash F uh, Corsillo, lot two. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yes. so that's where the other house is. Yes. Right, and uh, their lot actually wraps all the way around ours and then goes back over to Laurel Lane. So they have a long, if you look at like the Axis GIS, right. you, can, you can see they have, they have the frontage on Laurel Lane. It actually wraps all the way around. So you can hypothetically build a new driveway there so if that was a requirement of the town that would be something that we could okay i just yeah. if you if 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 in your if in your deed it's giving them a right of way across your land mm -hmm. then it's something we should be addressing on this as well okay. so it would be you know i would look at it as somehow figuring it out that maybe you make it that lot 1a mm -hmm. grants them the access mm -hmm. You know, grants the oh, grants the you. easement. Yep. Yep. Lot one B has no easement for them, mm -hmm. and therefore that you know a new drive. You would have to just be able to put a new entrance on Laurel Lane. Yeah, and it might be that neither lot, I guess, is, is what I'm saying, would need to get the easement because if we were to provide a driveway through their land that they own, it could wrap all the way around the house. So it would be a long driveway, but it would be doable. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying that yeah. that that's one of the things that I know it wasn't pointed out, but there is, okay. yeah. it is. I don't know, you know, it is part of the thing that the, if there is three yeah. house, three houses can't service the same drive. So one way or the other, for it to be approved, we would need to provide either easement through lot one A or correct. Need to show you enough. Got it. Correct. Okay. Correct. Understood. Okay. All right. Other questions for any more? I have uh, more comments from the board. Okay. Yeah. The other. Um, and the the other side of that is you're looking at both both houses now will be be tying into their um, existing water and sewer. Yeah. Okay. Is it just right now? Are they on well? I didn't see a well uh, right here. Right now, uh, well, actually, they're they're on town water. It would be the town sewer that we need to connect. To. So okay, yeah. you are in, already on town water. Right. Okay. Town water. Yeah. Okay, so it's just town sewer you look to go into. Yep. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And have we talked to the? Um, Sewer Commission about a additional betterment for the for the new for the new proposed lot. So they just said that they wanted us to confirm that it would be possible to hook it up, but okay. it, but we know the neighbors are doing it and that it has been do, done historically on the road. So again, that would need to be something gone. We need to go through that process and obviously get that approved and coordinated mm -hmm. with the town. But uh, I think we wanted to kind of go through this process first. Okay, and then there's a long, I don't know whether I want to call it a hockey stick or whatever, mm -hmm. but the, um, the hammerhead mm -hmm. that comes down and there's a small, um, lot, proposed lot 1A has a small section here. Mm -hmm. Roughly how wide is that section? Is that, in other words, is it wide enough for a drive? Uh, yeah, I believe it's about uh, 12 feet across. So it's um, not quite wide enough for a drive then because you need a little extra on each side. Okay. Yeah, so we could modify that you know we can widen we can move this line over a little bit and widen that to i can work with the engineer to make that work okay yeah. i'm just yeah. i'm just like i said totally i'm just looking yeah. at it yeah. as um not, not not having to come back like, yeah okay yeah right. I, no more no questions at this one okay thank you hans any questions no i said I, I, not for the applicant just more for the board okay. i mean do you want to discuss it now or wait oh you can address them now if you'd like well you know you want to wait to the yeah, end? yeah i'll wait okay yeah patrick uh no dave just covered my and don uh what is the square footage of the existing and what uh, the square footage of the new building so uh according to the engineer uh all of the, of the building itself or of the lots the building so the building right now is about 3500 square foot finished uh finished floor space 
so that would remain as existing. Uh, the new one, we were thinking between 2,000 and 2,500. Uh, we were going to work with uh, a local architect to, you know, um, come up with those plans. But again, somewhere in that range, but depending on the budget and the design, between 2,000 and 2,500. So nothing huge. And how many stories on the new one? We're thinking most likely one story, okay. uh, but uh, it really kind of depends. We haven't got into the full design phase yet because we wanted to kind of move through this, but if you decide. Yeah, on the diagram, it looks larger, so I, that's what I was asking. Yeah, that's just kind of the general area that it can be okay. located in. Uh, I think ultimately the idea is to potentially build some sort of like mid-century modern uh, single level house that has good roof access for solar. Just we're, we're, our, the main intent is to give them a home that requires the least amount of, you know, electrical load uh, and you know they can live there as inexpensively as possible so that's our that's our goal and as efficiently as possible okay is that Laurel Lane when you get just before your house it almost seems like the road ends uh -huh. is that official town road down to the house section so the road basically there's like a uh, the road pretty much ends right where it shows that corner on, on the plan here so that's all private road that kind of that dotted line that's all private road right. um which is shared between us and the neighbor currently so that would I need that, that would you know we would revise that however we needed to 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 make it work but it would all be repaved yeah, so. yeah. yeah because one of the criteria is that it must be on up uh, accepted town road so that's why I asked the question um, the other question I have is you know yeah we're asking for a uh, hundred feet to 50 feet mm -hmm. and the bylaw frankly on under the and that's why you're here mm -hmm. can be reduced by 50 percent when it provides only access to one dwelling which kind of refers to you and uh, the unit uh, the lot, which is equal to twice the minimum. So what you're doing is you're breaking it out into two one-acre lots. So I just I want to kind of make the point here. I believe, based off of what I'm presenting here, that there would be a way to provide an individual, if that was a requirement right, of the town, we could have a driveway for each individual dwelling that had frontage on the accepted town road. OK. So. What you're seeing there up in the corner, um, you know, kind of where it says zoning residential A or zoning res re residential B, Laurel Lane, that is accepted town road. So you can see lot 1B has, you know, the, the 50 feet, and then there's an additional 50 feet that's on the lot 1A that wraps around that kind of hockey stick design. And then the neighbor's lot actually has frontage that wraps all the way around that. It's another hockey stick that comes around and has the additional frontage on Laurel Lane. Okay. So we could you know create you should three, be able to yeah, do it we should be able to create three driveways yeah because you're also going to have to go to the plan i'm not sure what happens but yeah you know um they would that you would be required to go to the planning board as well uh -huh. um okay so so mr chair uh, just a clarif another clarification um you have on here it shows existing lot th uh, locus existing lot three lot th proposed lot 3a and lot 3b Mm -hmm. Are those what you're adding? And then there's like a proposed parcel B and proposed, you know, so you have a lot of proposed and things like that. Is that, you? are you adding that to the proposed lot 1A? No, there's just proposed lot parcel A and parcel B. That's the overall. I'm not exactly sure why he wrote additional information here, proposed lot 1A. But uh, there's parcel A, which is 1.01, .01, and there's parcel B, which is 1.03. And those are, there's just two. Lot. So, so basically what he did is, is if you look at a proposed lot 1A mm -hmm. and proposed lot 3A, mm -hmm. add up to the 1.01, .01, yep. and then proposed lot 1B and proposed lot 3B, add up to the 1.03. Yeah, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. So he, yeah, he confused us a little bit there by... Yeah, it confused me a little bit too, but yeah, that's, that's accurate. Okay, so yeah. if you had to widen that swatch to make a legal driveway, you would just be reducing proposal parcel B by say whatever like you know it still could be over an acre yeah we could yeah we could just play with these lines a little bit here to to make okay. it work 
Fazla. Sen. Ya. Um. Okay, Hunt, do you want to bring up your questions? Yeah, so I, I you know, <clears throat> I understand what the applicant's trying to do, but I also, I, I, you know, I'm having a hard ish to hard time with this, the uh, special permit dimensional variation. Um, it, it really is a variance, you know, what's before us. Um, I mean, a special <coughs> permit dimensional variation, typically we use when someone wants to heighten the, the roof or come out and, but, you know, you're asking us mm -hmm. to take your lot and split it in two, take mm -hmm. the 100 feet. Mm -hmm. You need 100 feet of minimum requirements. You know, mm -hmm. the board, this board, mm -hmm. you know, our job is to interpret the bylaw. Does it meet the intent of what the bylaw was? My concern is that if we grant this to you, mm -hmm. everybody's going to be coming, looking to subdivide their property from 100 feet to 50 feet. You know, the intent of the bylaw is for you to have 100 feet of frontage in order to have a house lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's my main concern. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we do the special permit dimensional variation all the time, but it's mm -hmm. typically <clears throat> when someone's up against, you know, their side yard setback or something like that. Mm -hmm. Very rarely have I seen that we split, a sp you know, special permit dimensional variation and split okay. it into two lots. I mean, we're making a conforming lot non-conforming to the is, bylaw. That is correct. And I, and I, I, I we, I'm, not I'm not comfortable with it. Okay. We, we um, <clears throat> basically what it, what it comes down to is for a dimensional variation, you have to meet all the criteria. The criteria is all in, listed there. Um, Which so they do I'm, not I'm meet. Sure you've I mean, they meet the criteria that. for the current house, but they right. do not meet the criteria no, for No, I'm talking for a dimensional yeah. variation. You can go through. I think what you are saying, if I'm understanding it correctly, is you are saying uh, that under 8.3 D1, they are nullifying or substantially degrading from the intent of the bylaw. Which is a requirement that this board meets and says that it, it's not. I, I don't know how you can sit up here and say that we're, 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 we're uh, you know, upholding the intent of the bylaw by taking that property and, and dividing it, you know, 50 feet each, each, each lot, you know, because that, I'm, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, I Every do. case is <clears throat> specific and individual. Mm -hmm. But it opens up precedent where people start coming in saying, hey, you did it for Laurel Lane, now I want to do it. Um, I'm just not comfortable with it. I, I really think it's a variance, and I think that doesn't meet the, 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 you know, the variance you have, it's very hard to meet. You have, you know, very strict criteria, really topography, soil, and shape of the, yeah. of the land. Uh, yeah. None of these, to yeah, none of these, none of that criteria fits into your scenario. Um, you know, I understand that you're looking to take up, you know, the property and divide it into two house lots, but, you know, from my perspective, that would deviate <coughs> from the intent of the bylaw. And, and that's set by town, you know, town yeah, meeting. Yeah, I, I guess at the end of the day, I, I fully understand, you know, what the situation is. I understand that we're asking to deviate from what's in the bylaw. I guess, you know, what I'm trying to do here is, you know, ultimately my parents have lived here for going on 30 years, right? They like Lunenburg. The, 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 the lots themselves are gonna be much larger than everything else in the street. And I'm just trying to find a way to keep them in Lunenburg, you know, living a happy life without having to sell the house and move elsewhere. And I, considering the rest of the street and you know the way that every other house is on that street and the fact that none of the other neighbors really opposed it i guess i'm just looking for a way to solve that problem so they can retire and have a you know decent life and that's what i'm asking for here you know i don't i don't know you know <clears throat> i totally understand mm -hmm. what you're trying to do and i'm sure your parents are not the first folks in town who are trying to deal with it i know it happens all the time mm -hmm. uh however you know our our job is to you know interpret the bylaw, mm -hmm. we don't make it up. That's mm -hmm. town meeting. Um, and I always tell people, if you don't like the, the, the bylaw, you know, see if you can change it. Um, but for me, you know, asking me to, to you know, change that bylaw from 100 feet of frontage, which is required to 50 feet to make two lots, I'm, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with it unless someone can make a, you know, an argument saying otherwise. But just so uh, I understand the but other- I, But I, let me ask you this. Yeah. Say that you can't 
we don't allow what you're trying to do here. Mm -hmm. Have you talked to the building inspector about going to the planning board and doing a subdivision on those two properties and maybe just do a common driveway with without having to reduce the frontage? Is that possible? Is there any kind of I think what he recommended was to come here first and talk to you and if you gave us, you know, the approval that he said then that we should go to the planning board with the relief, quote unquote, in hand from from you, you know, from this board, and then at that point we would go to the planning board and uh, present them with a, you know, a final plan based on what your input has been. So, yeah. I mean, because the other option, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, is to, you know, either continue the hearing. I, I listen. I'm just thinking out loud. Mm -hmm. Continue the hearing, or they can, um, uh, was it repeal without prejudice? Uh, they could withdraw without prejudice, because if we make a determination tonight. On this, mm -hmm. I think it's two years, right, before you can come back here. Yeah, it's two years. Yeah. So if we, if you, you know, if we deny it, mm -hmm. you can't come back for two years in, on this. On this, you, you could um, either continue it, but I don't know why you would continue it because we probably make a vote, or you could withdraw with prejudice and go back and try to figure out whether something else makes sense and then come back. So you know, you're kind of withdrawing this. <clears throat> you still protect your rights and then you can come back, but. I, it's only my personal opinion, so it's, it's this so one I guess vote. My question to you would be, okay, regardless of what we do here, we're going to have the same amount of land. We're going to ultimately have the same amount of frontage. So I'm not sure what else in here that you would like to see that would change, that would move you. If there's something in here that would move your position, then you know that sounds like a good idea. If we're going to spend three, four months and thousands more dollars, yeah. then let's just get it over yeah. with. You know. If you so, could get another 100 feet of frontage, I'd be a lot happier, you know, um, but you don't have it. So the, as I understand, right, so the other bylaw says if you have two acres, then you could go down to 50 feet of frontage. Is that accurate? Double the lot size. I don't, yeah, I think I don't, it is, I don't know. You have to double the lot size right. to reduce the frontage. Right. Right. So I guess, yeah, I fully understand that it's a, you know, it's a variance from the law. I guess what I'm asking the board here is just on the basis of, the conformity of the rest of the street, you know, the fact that uh, I, I don't think it, it is changing or it is asking for a variance, but I, you know, my opinion of it, looking at it in context of the rest of the street is that it's a reasonable request. The neighbors seem to agree because they're not saying anything about it. You know, we talk to the neighbors, they're all fine with it. So if the whole town is okay with it, you know, and it's just going to allow me to build a home for my parents to retire in, and it's just, you know, a variance of 50 feet. That's really, I, I mean, I, I see your point that other people could want to come in here and say, hey, you did it for these people. Can you do it for us? And I guess my retort to that would be, well, you can always say no to those people, or you can say yes, it depends on the situation and if it's reasonable and, you know, it's not going to change your ability to accept or reject anyone else's claim. And if they have a reasonable request, then you could explore that at that time. So I, I guess there's two ways I would go with this. Um, either let's just take a vote on it now and get it over with. If you're going to reject it, reject it. But I, I, I'm hoping that uh, you, know, you guys can see that there's some reasonableness to it and maybe there's you know, some support for it. If what you're saying is mm -hmm. you suggest that I should continue it and uh, you know, pursue other potential options, what would be awesome is if you could give me some hint as to what you would like to see so that I can go back to the designers and then come up with that. Because I just, you know, I, I'm trying to find a solution for them. And I don't want to drag them out for months. If, if you guys say no, we're going to put the house in the market. Or we're going to move on with life. So so, so yeah. let me, <clears throat> just for clarification, you, you would mentioned the subdivision can you go into a little bit more I, I don't know I'm just I'm just I was just oh, throwing right. it out there I was wondering if that yeah, would they, might be an alternative to coming to us and at seeking relief from the bylaw that says you have to have you know 100 feet of frontage they would, they right. would have to go to the planning board right for a uh, subdivision right and they in the planning board would be the lot areas and the frontage reduction. Right. I'm just saying it could so be an alternative to, to rejecting right. him and saying, but I don't know but where you guys stand. I'm just saying, right. you know, yeah. um, what I don't want to see is if we take a vote mm -hmm. and, you, and, and it's against you, mm -hmm. you can't come back for two years. 
or you could withdraw with prejudice if you, if you think that you're not going to get the votes. I'm one vote, mm -hmm. so you, you know you need you need the other votes. Yeah, you, you yeah. need a super majority. You need four in favor. Okay. So, so I'm just saying. So if if let's say for instance we voted against you, you wouldn't mm. be back here. If if you you get a straw sense that you know mm -hmm. we're n we're <clears throat> not going in your favor, you mm -hmm. can withdraw with prejudice. Go to the planning department try to figure something out and come back if you wanted to or you don't have to come back i'm just mm. i'm trying to prevent you if we we reject you you can't mm. come back for two years so basically and, and the I reason think, yeah i think what you're saying it's it's kind of you know who goes first mm -hmm. right planning board or planning board right mm -hmm. right and, and typically what happens yeah. the planning board wants you to come here first uh -huh. if we said yes then you'd be working with them but i'm trying to figure out whether there's a way to achieve your objective without having to come for us and saying we need relief where you know in my in my in my perspective you don't meet the criteria for what you're looking for so and that's what i'm struggling with can i ask are are they able to if if the lot stayed with a, one lot stays with 100 feet are they able to have one non-conforming lot with the right of way through that one lot that's a building inspector question okay I'm just I'm just asking because I don't remember I don't I didn't memorize the the bylaws but I was just I'm I'm, I'm with I mean, trying to respect of trying to figure out other ways if mm -hmm. they were doing accessory housing yeah then it wouldn't be anything like that yeah that would be fine well, so, I don't say we would still have to go through a hearing and all of that yeah yeah yeah, yeah but sure. I'm just saying there, there's there are things in our bylaws that allow a lot of this yeah, to be I mean, done yeah but not splitting the lot so you're saying basically building a second house what's that can, can you clarify what you, you uh, accessory housing so building like an adu house on on the lot you could you, <coughs> you would still have to go through the whole thing mm. but but your parents uh, i think they live there a lot you know i think it's you know if you bought a property you can only you can't build for right. a year or something like that so you, you, there's that there's that possibility so i would Build, basically keep one lot, build another house on it, but can I, can I sell well, the other house? To, yeah, you, could, you would have to come to the zoning board. You, <clears throat> it's different criteria. Mm -hmm. and, but you would have to, they would have to be like, you, li you live in there and you're building a house for your parents, as an accessory housing to your house. So, yeah, so you build accessory right. dwelling unit. But like I say, it's different criteria. You would have to come back. But then could I ultimately sell the other house or does it have to stay? It would just be two homes on one lot. Um, yeah, I, don't, I would have to go through so I don't think you can sell. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can sell another you, house. You house wouldn't be able to sell it. I mean, which is the whole point. You could, you could rent, but you wouldn't be able to sell. So if I, go to the, if I go to the planning board, basically I'm just asking the same questions to a different board. Is that more or less what? They would, they would go through the, the frontage and the, the acreage and all of that i'm not sure mm -hmm. i really think probably the building inspector was the same thing who's first who's second yeah in a way it kind of makes sense that the, he went to the the zoning board first mm -hmm. because if we approved it uh you would just go there mm -hmm. um yeah he said to come here and then go there yeah that's yeah, what I'm that's yeah. that's yeah like i say it's okay and, and as I said, one, one thing, though, is I would look at is that uh, be, there be a proposal to remove, you know, to have it so that this is separate. Because that's one of the things you're going to have to talk to the planning board anyhow is about a separate entrance onto Laurel Drive. Because, the, you know, that, that's one thing we do know is that we can't have three homes assessing the same entrance on, the, on, the, on there. Okay. Otherwise, you know, you can do it if the driveway was X amount wide. And then you're splitting the driveway in half. It's kind of a semantics thing. I've, I've lived on one of those myself. Mm -hmm. But, you know, usually they look, they, they, did what, they didn't take too kindly on that. So we had a 40 foot wide drive, driveway. Mm -hmm. And a 40, uh, it was, I think I'm trying to say 30 feet on the opening mm -hmm. at the street. And that was seen as, it was basically supposedly two driveways running parallel up a hill. So, so one car can come down, one car can go up at yeah. the same time. <laughs> I guess I'm trying to. <laughs> that's interesting, but, uh, but he, so here, here, you know, what what happens if there is a car coming down one side and one coming down the other? You really have no place for them to go. Right. So, 
Um, yeah, so I guess I, I guess I, I I'm still a little bit unclear on what uh, the overall idea is here. But um, my, as I understand, my options now are to either let you guys vote or to go back and come up yeah. with with. I mean, we can. I can ask for a motion, mm. a second, and then you're going to get a vote, and whatever happens, happens. Or I can withdraw. Or oh, you can withdraw. And I can go to the planning board with something that shows driveways basically but even if you want to go to the planning board and just find out mm -hmm. what they you know what their feelings are and their sentiments because in the end mm -hmm. they're kind of the ruling body so if the planning board says yes to this then I come back to you guys you would come back under the same criteria here right now on and if they, but if they said yes you guys would change your mind I I couldn't tell you what we would say I have no idea I couldn't say. But I don't, hopefully, I don't know what this board would vote tonight. Yeah, I, mean, I have no idea. Yeah. So I couldn't really tell you. You know, it would just be a, like a new hearing. So I, in that case, I go to the planning board. They would vote, if, and if they voted, then I'd come back here with potentially very similar plans. And you guys. Well, I mean, you could go to the planning board and say, "Listen." Um, you know, this plan is not flying with it, not going to fly with the ZBA. Is there any other relief that I, I can get through your board to get what I want to do? I mean, that's the question, right? But I don't know how, what these guys are voting. I mean, yeah. I'm just it, might, yeah, it might be as simple as they say, yes, we, you could do a subdivision. Right. And you're done. And you have two houses, you know. Mm -hmm. And they can still call conforming lots if, they, if they're saying it's a subdivision. Yeah. The only reason they can't call it A&R is because you don't have the frontage. Like you don't you don't have the lot width and you don't have the frontage to be able to do an uh, approval not required otherwise you wouldn't be here so okay um, so but my feeling is that really what you're asking for is a variance and statutorily mm. one of the criteria is that it nullifies from the, the, for the you know nullifies the intent of the bylaw which <coughs> you, you know that you don't satisfy that and then you don't you, you know the soil the shape and topography you just don't you don't meet that either I mean it's a high bar in the first place mm. but this is like you know. This my personal opinion. All right, so I, I know your opinion. Is there any way I can kind of get a feel for what other people <laughs> that you have to vote? No. Not public comment too. Just FYI, yeah. Mm -hmm. But not. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, no, I got. No. I can't. We okay. can't give you a feeling. Then <laughs> we'd have to do that with everybody. Okay. Um, what do you guys want to do? I don't think it'll do any good to go to the planning board. You don't want to go to the planning board and try to put it in front of the problem. That's what I think, too. I don't think it'll do them any good. No, that, that's only if, there was a var if, if it was for a variance, that that bar is extremely high. But when that, you're not asking, you know, that's, that's what the whole idea is, is that in order to be, this is not just a dimensional variation, it's actually a variance that needs to be done. And for that, it sets it's the bar is higher for the variance. However, there are other you know there might be other avenues that you guys have. Plus, I would look at it as even if we said something, you I'd want to be able to have you guys talk to the planning board mm -hmm. about the idea of what's going on with the driveways. Can I make another cut to Laurel Lane? Those are all them. All as Hans mentioned, all we do is interpret what the laws that they set, uh, their intent on those laws. Okay. Um but again, huh. you would still have to go here and there. So all well, I think we, all we're doing we can't is go back flipping it to them. So if we take a vote, we basically have no option. And What's based that? on reading between the lines here, I think you guys are probably going to vote no. So um. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, me personally, you, you have nothing to lose. If you, if you withdraw with what? prejudice, you go back to the planning board. If you have to come back here, we're going to make a vote. So I mean, either you vote tonight and you win or you lose or you withdraw go back to the planning board see if they can if you can work a deal with them if you can't then you're going to have to come back here anyways why for the don't, same thing why don't what just would we get on the planning board's agenda what? i'm sorry what would we get on the planning board's agenda you just submit a permit application with them too yeah, probably next month the you just they meet every well, week so. yeah they, they i would actually weekly. i mean i don't know how the board feels i would go there original just go yourself for information all right. All right, I guess so what I would do is I would continue this. 
If, right. if you want to get more information, I would continue it yeah. to a date certain. Um, I'll have to take a motion on that. But, and then <clears throat> just go for information, come back, you'll be in the same place you are. Which mm. they, we won't have to read everything, we won't have to go through everything because it's a continuance, it'll just be a continuation of this hearing. So I go to the planning board, they might say, hey, if you do this. I would just, you know, talk to them and see where they, what hmm. they feel. And if, you know, then you can come back and if you get more information or you get mm -hmm. something from them that says <clears throat> whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, to be honest with you, I don't know what you're gonna find. But it wouldn't hurt to talk to them. Mm -hmm. And then just as an information without going to them yet mm. come back here with whatever new information you have or whatever mm -hmm. and you know all right well i guess we all you're going to lose is a couple of weeks because we can schedule it again we have another hearing when not till december 13th oh so you, we continue it till december 13th and, and, do you know when the planning board meeting is by chance they meet every other monday every other monday okay all right then we'll C can i just before mm -hmm. sure Absolutely. Before anything mm -hmm. uh, gets signed, if it's continued, <clears throat> um, does it have to kind of just be continued and come back with this exact paperwork? Whereas if they withdraw, is that is there any benefit uh, to he that? Can, because he can, can come back with with anything else he wants. I mean, we open it up. We allow them to come up and speak and submit any new information they want. Okay. All right. Yeah, I just and I'm just saying if they can come up with a new one. Is there something else you like don't to see? They can. I just wanted to like I just didn't mm. procedure wise. I just I didn't know if you went to planning and they said, oh yeah, sure, do this, this, and this, and then if you came back yeah. with this same paperwork, even if, that even if they say yes, you, so. this, this, and this, it still has okay, okay, we're, okay. We're still in the same hearing. Okay, it All changes right. nothing in our hearing. Okay, so other than we'll get additional information. Can add and change and okay, okay, that was all. I just. It's their bylaw. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it's the town's bylaw, but yeah, it's, it's, it's they're the ones who kind of set it. Okay. So if I go there and they say, hey, draw this line, draw that line, move this, and they say, hey, we're good to go, I come back here with that information, it, there, you guys may be As, as far as I'm meetable. concerned, with, when you come back, yeah. you, we continue it and you come back, we're going to start exactly where we are. Right. So, you know, there's nothing. It just would be the difference. Whatever new information I gained from that hearing. You could, can submit yeah. that new information. We will start exactly where we are. Is, is there a difference between <coughs> continuance and, uh, and you know, pull it, withdraw, with, withdraw with pre without prejudice? Uh -huh. Yes. If, if he withdraws. It's yeah. brand right. new. It's brand new. So you'd if have to we continue two it, weeks. we start right here. Okay. She doesn't have to reread the. Oh, so this notice. is just so Lisa doesn't have to reread. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's not it at all. I'm right. just kidding. <laughs> do we have a Do we have a land use person there? Uh, yes. Temporary. Oh, temporary. Okay. 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 All, right. all right. So what? I guess basically, what's your pleasure? We can. I think let's go with the. I think. It sounds to me like <clears throat> what makes the most sense is the continuance option, if that's yeah, we'll, to you. Yeah, we'll go. I will ask for a, for a motion for a continuance. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we continue this meeting to a date and time specific. Which is December 13th? Yes. At your, it'll probably... Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, but <clears throat> probably we got... Who do we have in front of him? They didn't apply yet. Oh, okay. So, so, I'll have, oh, so then do I need to do any additional applications? Through you, Lisa? Okay. No, and then nothing. Is it, I just need to go on to the viewpoint and then apply for the... Yeah, like I say, I would just try and get some more information and... Yeah, but I think I would need to submit the viewpoint to get onto the onto the planning board's well, agenda. I, so I you, would, can, you might be able to just go in and talk to the land use person. Okay. Who's and the chairman now? Uh, Richard Harris. Oh, oh okay. the, the chairman is... Matthew Brenner. Okay. Okay. So but you may want to just go in and, and talk to them. And does he have office Say hours? I'm here. I was in front. Okay. You know, they continued it. If I could get new information. 
Okay, so go in at their meeting every other Monday, or do they have like office hours in town, or? They have office hours. You have to get on their agenda. Okay, all right. So I'll, I'll follow up and then yeah, I'll follow up. Get, get yeah. on their agenda. Go talk to them. <clears throat> all right, and then come back. You gotta take a vote on the motion. Second yeah. motion. Yeah, we do have to. Oh, uh, second to motion. Second. On the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you okay. very much. So we Thanks. will see you on December thirteenth. Look forward to it. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we adjourn. We didn't do public. Oh. Is there any public, uh, anyone on? There was no one on Zoom. That's why I didn't know. Nobody didn't on Zoom. You. Would either of you like to speak before you leave from the public? As a public? <laughs> Thank you very much for all your work. Okay. <clears throat> all right. We look for positive outcomes. That? We look for positive outcomes. Let's put it. Very positive. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. I made a motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Oh, sorry. Second. All right. Ava. All right. Aye. Aye. I guess Patrick and Don want to